Okay, thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, our next speaker is Tony Mickey. He is the Engineering and R&D Manager at Subsea Instrumentation Specialists Aquatech Group. Since joining Aquatech in 2014, he's been involved in designing, building, and commissioning a variety of subsea data acquisition and, and logging systems. And his title today is, is Retrofit Subsea Strain Monitoring. So over to you, Tony. Thank you. OK, so what I'd like to talk to you guys about today is our um, Connectron product, which is, um, as introduced, a subsea retrofit strain monitoring clamp. Um, Oh, I see. Okay, right. So um, how I'd like to do this is uh, just a very quick introduction to Aquatech first, and then we'll go over the, uh, the motivation for the project, um, define the problem a little bit, um, present our engineering solution to this problem, and then describe the, uh, the validation work that went into that solution and the testing, followed by the, um, the commissioning and the installation, and then have a, a brief look at the, um, at the data that was retrieved, how it was analyzed, and then some future uh, next steps and evolutions of this product. So just um, very briefly about Aquatech. Um, we were founded in 1990, headquartered in Basingstoke in, um, in South Hampshire here in the UK. There is a, um, a wide worldwide customer base for um, a large variety of products. Key technologies that we operate in include um, acoustics and optics, both for measurement and for communications. Um, in the uh, subsea integrity sector, we're uh, focused on attitude, motion, um, vibration and strain monitoring, precision, uh, temperature and pressure come up across the product range, as well as um, offering cathodic protection systems and ultra low power electronics unpin, underpin um, the, the majority of these products. Through water communications is also a very active area for us, both in the, um, in the optical and in the acoustic mode. So three main sectors. The first one, sediment salt. This is primarily concerned with, um, with monitoring suspended sediment, both acoustically and optically, um, using short range and long range profilers. Uh, in the marine bioacoustics um, sector, we're looking at um, soundscape monitoring, both broadband and specific um, life forms, as well as marine mammal mitigation for when noisy operations are going on. Um, but the one that we're interested today in today is the uh, subsea integrity area. So integrity monitoring systems, which we'll talk about in a second, but also there are, there's a, a product line for leak detection, both, both using um, thermal and optical and um, acoustic techniques, uh, a suite of products catering for pipeline pre-commissioning, um, cathodic protection and monitoring. This is um, essentially everything from monitoring passive systems to provisioning full-scale um, impressed current systems together with uh, feedback control and monitoring. Um, kind of uh, general products that um, overarch all these different sectors are optical and acoustic modems, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, low power data logging technology and um, custom system design, particularly in the integrity area. So the motivation for the project, um, the best place to start with this is probably at the end. So in April 2021, just as our Connectron clamp was about to be installed, sitting on the dock side, um, a major storm event struck the North Sea, particularly in the, in the Shetlands where we were deploying from. Exceptional sea states were predicted. Um, and in fact, the, uh, the support vessel that was uh, scheduled to take the clamp offshore had to shelter in the harbor for a number of days because of the sea states. Multiple operators were affected. There were, um, there were cancellations of flights. And what, what are the, um, the kind of implications of all this? So the obvious ones are the financial implications. So there's lost production when platforms have to be downmanned and shut down, and then the, obviously the cost of evacuating crews. But then there are slightly, um, slightly less quantifiable implications, the reputational implications. So uh, when people see news stories like this, there could be a um, public perception of safety which is altered, and even an operator's own staff could start to have concerns. So what does a structural technical authority do? Well, this is where the requirement came from. So what we have is an aging North Sea platform with quite low structural redundancy and the need to manage the optimum down manning states for this platform. So for fatigue life, there, there is a model, but it was considered that perhaps the model is slightly conservative and there was maybe the potential to increase the uh, fatigue life by a factor of five or 10. If the strain could be monitored in situ, 
then the uncertainty kind of associated with all of this could be reduced, the model could be calibrated, and the downmining C state could be removed, could be reduced, rather. So specifically, what the requirement boiled down to is monitoring the strain on three quadrants of a 1,200 millimeter uh, structural strain member, uh, structural brace member, 43 meters down, a horizontal member in this case. Um, there's a, a small schematic of the jacket there on the side with the location identified um, where this uh, clamp was installed. So uh, quite, a, quite a unique requirement um, which presented a number of challenges. So first of all, monitoring on three quadrants. So to address this, Aquatech designed a, um, a C-shaped clamp with three sets of gauges that you can see there at the um, 12 o'clock and 9 o'clock and 6 o'clock positions. Requirement for robust but simple attachments. So this had to be um, installed by an ROV. And the way that we dealt with this one was uh, a set of four high-powered magnet modules, um, two that were controllable by ROV movable torque buckets and two that were in fixed positions that were offset by jacking screws. In total, 330 kilograms attraction attract force per magnet module, so a total of 1.3 tons of attraction force, designed for 100-year hydrodynamic maxima based on the data for this part of the North Sea. So, um, in, a, in a word, robust. Strain gauge, engage, strain gauge engagement sorry, is a, um, was a, another unique problem. So strain gauges are quite um, fragile, sensitive devices um, which had to be protected for, for shipment, uh, deployment and installation, and then basically activated at commissioning time. So we created a, um, a unique strain transfer mechanism with a 4,000 microstrain uh, measurement range, plus or minus 2,000 microstrain, with better than 10 microstrain resolution. Each of those three locations that were outlined had dual redundancy, so two side-by-side -side gauges measuring the same thing, six fully independent channels, and the gauges were initially retracted for protection, simultaneously uh, deployed by the activation of a single um, ROV operable valve, and then a um, calibrated sprung system would, um, would deploy the gauges against the structural member with a, um, with a calibrated force. Diverless installation, so um, the requirement was to install this in the North Sea using ROVs. So all the ROV contact points are, um, are torque buckets, so torque buckets for the movable magnets, for the, um, for the, for the jacking points, ROV switch for the uh, hydraulic release, and then these large buoyancy modules that reduce the weight in water to about 30 kilos. So quite easy to handle. In terms of instrumentation, so a three-year continuous monitoring life was required. So um, we created our very low power acquisition electronics, which nevertheless is working quite hard. So it's um, recording six strains, three axes of acceleration, and the pressure at 3.3 samples per second continuously for three years. Um, and it's recording temperature somewhat slower as well as battery life and several other parameters um, that don't change as quickly. So three year battery life, four and a quarter gigabytes of non-volatile storage, and a, um, and a variety of communication methods. So optical communications is the primary, um, but acoustic communications for status reporting is also provisioned. So in terms of getting access to this data, um, the customer required at least biannual data retrieval, um, if not more frequent. And what we've, uh, what we've provided for this is the um, Aquamodem OP2, which is our short range optical modem um, designed for depth rating of 3,500 meters. So this is an, an ROV deployable device. The, um, the kind of mirror image of this device is on the instrumentation pod. And what it does is it provides a one megabit per second data transfer rate up the ROV umbilical non-contact range of approximately one meter depending on the um, level of turbidity in the water. Um, just as, a, as another note on, on Aquamodem, so that's the, uh, the, the kind of the full depth rated steel version that, that was mentioned there, but there is also a 1,000 meter version of this device intended for inspection class ROVs. So um, this Aquamodem OP2 Lite, as it's called, is um, neutrally buoyant, offers RS-232 or 485 communication at various baud rates, and it provides a transparent link, so anybody's equipment could be, um, could be basically interrogated using this system. And the, the main advantage, the reason for mentioning it here, is because it can be launched from the platform directly using a very small ROV, so the, um, the cost of, um, of gathering your data is greatly reduced due to the, um, the fact that the vessel doesn't have to be there. It could be a platform-launched um, small, uh, small robot. 
so what that means is that you could get access to data more frequently and more conveniently and, and on more flexible schedules. So a system like this um, required extensive validation and we, we tested it with, um, we tested it in a number of stages. The first stage was um, testing one gauge at a time using a precision motion table with three microstrain positioning resolution. Um, what you can see in the, in the plot there is the, um, the gauge being uh, moved by plus or minus 10 microstrain and the, the plot gives an idea of, of the repeatability of the data that we were getting. Um, and then we moved on to full-size structural member section testing. So we got a, um, a sample of the brace pipe and here the, um, the, the full-scale clamp uh, without the floats and a few other bits was loaded onto this pipe. All strain gauges were engaged at the same time and um, reference gauges were put around that. And then um, hydraulic ram uh, setup basically created strains within the pipe that were then, um, that were then measured by the, by the strain transfer mechanism and also by the reference strain gauges. So quite a lot of time was spent um, doing these sort of tests just to, um, just to validate and to make sure that the data that we got would be, would be representative of reality. So the installation, um, the clamp was installed on the 14th of April 2021, so just last spring. Aquatech provided uh, virtual support, being unable to be on site due to all the uh, COVID reasons that we're familiar with and travel restrictions. Um, what you can see here is a, a video showing uh, a few kind of snippets during the actual installation of the clamp. Here it's being offered up to the brace. Um, some of the torque buckets are being operated for the, um, for the jacking functions and for the magnet lowering functions. The clamp was commissioned the next day on April the 15th and the data was downloaded from Aquatech's office. So in order to make up for the fact that we weren't able to be on site, what we had was a, um, a full scale remote um, support for this project. Um, once the optical link was positioned, as you can see in that video there on the left, um, we, uh, the, the data was basically uplinked to the vessel and then via satellite link we were able to, um, myself and several other colleagues were able to interactively communicate with the, um, with the strain measurement pod to do all the commissioning and, um, and zeroing tasks. So we were spread all across the country. I was in um, a small cabin in the depths of Cornwall, basically in the middle of nowhere, and we were still able to communicate with this device as if we were effectively having it on our tabletops. So. And that went quite well. Um, three months later, in July 2021, the, um, the first data retrieval campaign took place. We downloaded 360 megabytes of data using the optical system that you can see operating there in the video. So about three months worth of logged data. Um, and this resulted in a complete set of strain data for each of the quadrants, as well as the ancillary uh, data. So the pressures and the accelerations and so on, all of that was successfully retrieved. So just to have a quick look at this data, here's a, um, a three month spectral analysis of the strain, just one of the channels. What you can see on the x-axis there is the time and the, um, and the frequencies on, on the y-axis. So what we begin to see are the um, two resonant structural, um, structural resonant frequencies of the jacket, um, which are consistent kind of low energy data throughout the whole um, three month time period. But what we also see is the, um, the relatively lower frequency but significantly higher energy wave generated, um, wave generated influences which are appearing there at the bottom of the plot. So if we take a time slice through this data and have a look at it in another way, um, this is what you see here. So the top plot shows um, frequency versus amplitude, bottom plot basically just the flip side of that, so time period versus amplitude. The same two structural resonant frequencies are present there on the, on the right hand side, low intensity, higher frequency. And then towards the left of the plot, left of the upper plot rather, there is the, um, the wave generated strain which is highlighted um, lower frequency but definitely much higher intensity. And the three colors there represent the three different quadrants of measurement. So just looking at the, the data in a, from, another, from another perspective, just to illustrate the, uh, the resolution of the system, this is a one minute capture from a relatively low energy time period. Um, what's intended to, show, to be shown here is basically the resolution of the system. So each, um, each division in the uh, y-axis grid here is 20 microstrain and you can see quite a few, um, quite a few data points, quite high resolution. Um, certainly better than the uh, 10 microstrain that, um, that was required. So 
sufficient for, for characterizing strain on a, um, on a brace pipe member. Now there's um, ancillary data that came with this as well. There's a set of accelerometers on board. They're mostly for kind of utility and backup purposes, but it's interesting to show them here because basically what, what you can see, um, it's not coming out as clearly there as, um, as it is on my screen, are the, are the two resonant frequencies which are still visible basically across the, um, across the time range there and the, um, and the wave generated accelerations. Now keeping in mind this is just one axis, uh, the wave generated accelerations which are shown um, at the lower frequency. So consistent with the, um, with the strain data, just basically confirmed from another direction. So in terms of next steps, the, um, the, there is general correlation with the model, which is good. However, the model um, has limitations in that it can't capture the complexity of real waves. Um, lessons were definitely learned from the installation of the clamp and they're already feeding back into the next generation of the Connectron clamp. Uh, most of the uh, improvements that we're focusing on are around um, ease of installation and speed of, um, of data download. Um, and that's said there. So uh, as, um, as m might be clear from the, uh, sorry? Four minutes. Four minutes, okay, I'll try to hurry up. Um, so the design is scalable for different size tubulars and it's also adaptable for a number of other uh, structural monitoring scenarios, including hulls, conductors, monopiles. Um, so just to quickly highlight one of these design concepts. So here is a um, design concept for a monopile, again, using the magnetic attachment, a contoured saddle geared towards the uh, circumference of the, of, the, um, of the, let's say, wind turbine monopile in this situation. We have a ROV activated fishtail handle that allows for low attraction force initial placement and winding back to increase the attraction force to the full, um, to the full lock on the, um, on the brace pipe member or the uh, monopile in this case. Optical communications is shown in this case, but um, equally this could have been provisioned with an acoustic modem. Um, communications options uh, depend on the amount of data that needs to be generated. Uh, here's a view of the bottom of the device showing the, uh, the magnetic attachment points as well as the gauges kind of zooming into that. You can see there's a, a pair of gauges in this proposal um, perpendicular to each other to show both circumferential and axial strain. Um, Further applications, well, there are quite a lot of further applications. So for example, monitoring the strain exerted on a pipeline during pipe laying operations, um, monitoring the strain in, in risers or conductors, which basically experience the same sort of um, environment as the jackets themselves might be of interest. Uh, monitoring pipeline pressurization without um, piercing the pipeline, without having access to a flange. So uh, another concept for that. And uh, moorings is another obvious one. So just in summary, this is um, the first ever installed subsea retrofit uh, strain monitoring system, full test, fully tested and validated um, in a variety of, um, of different scopes, small scale and large scale, and it's delivering high quality data right now. Um, it can be installed and interrogated during a routine inspection campaign. Um, and uh, data can be retrieved using small scale mini observation class ROVs deployed from platforms for greatly reduced cost and, um, and significantly more frequent access to the data. Um, so that's the Connectron clamp. Thank you very much. Thank you.